native GTK stuff. All right, running on VGA, but it works. So what's native right now in the existing releases? Um, we have a native GTK file dialog, and that's been native forever. Uh, the most recent releases um, in the GTK3 backend, our tooltips are now native tooltips. Uh, we just tell GTK where the tooltip is for and what the text is, and GTK itself renders a tooltip. So that means that if you have the case where you have uh, two screens side by side and the tooltip is cut off, that's a GTK issue, it's not a LibreOffice issue. Um, and then also additionally we're now using popovers for some of the things that used to be tooltips. They're a little bit different in GTK3 and they have a little indicator that points down to what um, the, the thing being pointed to is. Uh, they're pretty nice, we have them for formula type ahead in calc and the page indicator in the impress slide pane. The original motivation for making them native was that the um, uh, under Wayland it's very difficult to do your own uh, uh, um, uh, tooltip style things, so just use the GTK ones uh, and reuse them. Uh, what else is native? The, the app menu, uh, which is available under GNOME, is uh, fully native, of course. Our context menus are now native. If you right-click on something, we actually have real GTK uh, menus there. And the menu bar is now a native GTK3 menu bar, and obviously the um, menus within it are native GTK3 as well. And that derives out of the Unity work that was done there a couple of years ago. Um, so all of the menu positioning stuff is all native GTK, so if your menu uh, won't fit in the height available of the screen. The fallback there is a GTK native fallback. So there, it's the GTK positioning and the GTK behaviour for what happens if something doesn't fit in. So all those bugs can go um, to toolkit rather than to us. Uh, what's not native? And uh, all of these um, special effects are all just uh, OpenGL Wayland, uh, OpenGL on Wayland to show that it's flicker free. I showed them last year and they were flickery. This year they don't flicker. Um, so what do we actually do for everything else that makes it look like it's native? Everything else is actually not native. It's our own toolkit, but we um, use the uh, GTK APIs to render their widgets onto our actual locations where we pretend our widgets are. So it's never quite right. You have all these APIs that are fine, but you have to set up the context, the style context quite right. Uh, to map our state to the GTK state. So obviously for a radio button you'd say that it's uh, selected or not selected and then it'll render it into the space that you set out that you want it rendered into. But you have to get the size right as well. You have to query GTK. What would a radio button, what size should a radio button be in GTK? Figure that size out and then tell GTK to render into it. So if you get the size wrong, you get little artifacts that you'll see on some of our areas where it's not quite right. You also have to use the right uh, calls, so you might get them wrong. It's, it's quite a complicated set of affairs. And the actual stuff that's available for use outside the toolkit is no longer quite the stuff that's being used inside the toolkit. So you're using maybe context, style contexts that aren't quite right to try and get the effect that you're hoping for. So it never really quite works. But it, we're, we're pretty close, but, but it's not quite right. So we've been getting a lot of this stuff wrong. A little bit wrong, anyway. Um, so, backstory then, uh, the UI descriptions, where we've come from. Um, all of our dialogues used to be described in a, a SRC file format where every widget was a fixed size, uh, everything was measured in arbitrary character cell widths, and, uh, there, and then again there was, when you'd load the UI under German, it would multiply everything by 105% to get it a little bit bigger, because German tends to be a bit longer if you want to open up the same dialogues. In the Japanese, it would divide it by some amount because uh, those texts tend to be quite small. So you had this kind of guesstimate arbitrary stuff going on here. And there's no GUI editor for all this old stuff. So we've come from there to a situation where we're now using the GTK Builder file format. And all our UI is described in terms of GTK widgets. We're not using GTK widgets. We're using our own VCL widgets. But we have described everything in the GTK file format. And then we're mapping that at load time with our own uh, .ui, uh, GDK Builder file format, with our own loader. Uh, we added in some uh, resizable widgets equivalents, equivalents to the GTK grid, GTK box. So now we have uh, widgets that contain other widgets and then they dynamically size and position them according to the constraints that you can describe in the Glade GUI editor. So the results of all that is that you've got about 1,000 UI files. Uh, apparently we have like about eight um, uh, accessibility bugs uh, in each one, but they can be fixed uh, in Glade. 
so that's the UI file. So you've, everything is now described in the GTK style file format, but mapped at load time to our own widgets. The translations then are, yet again, were in our own uh, custom file format, the same SRC file format, and the output here is a res binary file. Each translation is indexed by a unique ID, and it's all uh, uh, converted to relatively standard PO to go up to the website to be translated there, to be brought back down and then converted back out into our own custom file format as well. And then when we converted everything over to this .ui file for the dynamic layout and the new description, we had to keep a lot of this stuff and we have a little bodge there so that we run those translations through the old translation system and back again. So that's the um, uh, uh, old translation format. What we've done at this stage for 6.0, I think, is that we have finally gotten rid of that file format and we're now using the more standard get text file format. So that means that with get text we can um, extract our translations directly from our .ui files and from our C++ with the standard tooling for that. So we use get text to pull out the tooling. Then we have our .po files which are now directly created from the translations. So they can go up to the website, back down from the website, and then we can use get text to create the standard .mo output file format. And then we're using the boost get text implementation to read them. So the old translation format is gone and the new translation format is the standard get text file format. So that's uh, 22,000 odd translations. So 1,000 UI files and 22,000 translations taken from the old binary file formats, converted into the .ui XML file format and to a binary but standardized get text MO file format. So the consequence of moving all of the UI descriptions and the translations out of those file formats into standardized file formats is that the dialogues are mostly GTK compatible in the sense that you can use Glade Previewer on any of our .UI files, put the .mo files from our translations into the path where they can find them, and you can use Glade Previewer um, to look at a localized version of, our, um, uh, of any of our .ui files, which should mean that if we were to deploy that Deckard web uh, uh, utility for displaying translations in a .ui file as translators modify them, that should work in the majority of cases out of the box now. So obviously where am I, where am I kind of hoping to go with all this? Um, It is possible to load those .ui files natively with GTK, with its own GTK Builder API, bypassing our re-implementation of that. And because GTK handles uh, the get text file format, let GTK load those .mo files, and then rather than and then come up with a kind of a compatibility layer where we would bind to those native GTK widgets rather than using our own VCL widgets, which are basically then emulating those GTK widgets uh, at, at runtime. And then we'd use our, take our entire existing stack that currently works and just keep that as a fallback case for guys under Windows and the other ones and for the, for the non-GTK case. For the GTK case, we'd use this alternative. Uh, let's do a walkthrough of my development version, which first shows a native GTK menu uh, fitting on screen as best it can and I will just show in case anybody hasn't seen it a popover that's what I'm talking about now that's a popover there that's a, a native GTK popover that's just a native GTK thingy and the toolbars are native of course and we will go for a simple one first, more breaks, insert manual break. So what this is then is a native GTK. Uh, uh, this one has been loaded by the GTK, native GTK loader. They can both exist at the same time. So this one dialogue is using the native GTK stuff and the other dialogue, except for one or two other ones, are using our fallback VCL one. So what difference does it make if you keep an eye on the radio button on the top left? Fades in, rather than comes straight in. Fades in, fades in. 
Okay, if I change to a different style and I change the file number here, when I have gone down to the minimum allowed value, it has grayed out the left button and left the other one ungrayed. We, in our implementation, we would have left them both clickable and you'd, it would be an example of where we get things wrong. Again, if we move back here and I hit this page break one, this should fade in gently rather than coming in hard. And then all these things are native and fully in, and it works, of course. It works. Now, the style insert table has a bit more detail. Again, gently fades in, fades out when you get to that level. And it might be, there we go, and so on and so forth. So it all just works and it's native. Now, what's maybe a little bit more interesting as well is that they're all, cust uh, they're all standard widgets. Uh, what do we do for the custom case? Uh, now, this is another uh, native GTK dialog loading up the .ui file that we currently are effectively using. Uh, first, look at that. None to default style. All these guys are going to fade in at the same time. So they all fade in. On the right-hand side, then, is a, is a custom widget. So for handling the case of a custom widget, uh, that's a GTK drawing area. We've got callbacks then where we draw onto our own existing output devices. And then when a GTK drawing area needs to refresh, it can take from our existing output device and convert it to its own. So they're all native and they all work. Uh, let's go back to the thingy for the conclusions. Yeah. Walk through. Yeah, so there's a halfway house API. Um, some of the problems, though, is that the dialogues will not be usable directly without some modification of the .ui files because we have our implementation and GTK has its implementation. There are some divergent areas where we have to modify our UI files for some of the quirks between our two different loading implementations. One minor one is like radio buttons. In our case, we have radio buttons and we, we link them to each other in a circle. Uh, to make it work under GTK, you have to link the inactive ones to the active one. So there are changes like that. And there's a whole bunch of smaller details as well where we have to modify the UI files, hopefully in a pretty much three quarters automatically kind of a way. Uh, one small one is where we have our buttons on the right hand side. We're just going to have to put them on the bottom, but we want to put them on the bottom anyway. So there's no uh, final things there. Some gotchas, and the gotchas I described there. And there's some difficulties where some parts of VCL have, have leaked out through the UNO API. So you can have an up down uh, handlers for the plus minus buttons and spin buttons for the up and down there. Uh, there isn't an, an existing an equivalent one in, in GTK. So there'll have to be a bit of work on to, um, on to interfacing the existing uh, UNO stuff that has leaked out that should never really have leaked out. And there'll have to be some amount of UNO support as well to tunnel the dialogues through. And one of the things that we probably need to do is we need to move those extended tips out of help and into the .ui files. I think we've wanted to do this for ages and it's still a good idea, but the translators have been through a lot of pain, so I don't want to put them through any more misery. But uh, that might happen anyway with, uh, with the help changes. If the help goes, the tooltips aren't there, so something will have to happen. And if we stick with the model of we need a fallback, then we're limited only to GTK widgets that exist as equivalents to our own VCL widgets. We would have to remain within the subset of, of, of the existing implementation, unless we went down the line to just try and use GTK under all platforms and get rid of our toolkit and then we could use whatever be available. But for the moment, I'm just limiting it to what we already support. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Does anybody have any questions or concerns? Yeah. Uh, the, the dialogue has um, a field where you can 